Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil YouTube video. Today we have a product highlight video and the product is called the Coco Coin from Charcoal. Now we've not used it, today we're gonna to be using it for the first time and we normally don't just jump on a product without using it but I'd like to explain our reasoning so that you can decide if you'd like to try this with us until we learn more. We will do follow-up videos about the results. I'm really confident because for one, uh, Charcoal has been a trusted name in coconut core for a long time. And you may recognize what they look like is kind of like a jiffy pellet. But instead of peat, they're made from cocoa core and they're made with a texture that's gonna be good for rooting clones as well as starting seeds. And the two reasons I'm excited about it are one, starting clones, we've had some issues getting rooting pucks in here and I've explained the whole story. And number two, starting seeds, I wanna have a way to use something that is basically sterile and not living soil for starting autoflower seeds where we won't have transplant shock. Um, for starting seeds and then moving them into your beds, whatever it may be, I think that it's another viable opportunity for people to use their expensive seeds with something that's not so full of life like your sixth cycle no-till bed and then you can easily transplant right into the bed. So let's get to, before I start talking about it, you can see they expand in water and I'm gonna demonstrate that for you and I'll show you how quickly it happens. They're also really nice. The paper isn't frayed anywhere. It's got a pre-drilled hole where I can see to put the stem in and I've not used it. So we're gonna see how easy it is to use together. I'm gonna take some cuts off the mom plants behind me. They need a haircut anyways. I've got some scissors here. All this stuff's available at build -A soil We're using a mega super heavy duty tray. These trays you can hold without dropping everything. Um, I got an image where there's a guy standing in it and people holding it from the sides. They're really strong, mega tray. And then I've got the Grodan insert, which I really like and will explain. I am gonna take a few cuts, but the main purpose of this video is just to talk about the product. I will take a whole bunch of cuts. I'm gonna do it two different ways. I've got a standard, I got the Grodan, then I've got a standard 72 cell tray. I'm gonna mention why we're doing that as far as just testing the moisture holding and which one's gonna root the best. We'll mention that in a minute. Let me get to the story first. So I've got the original that we used to use and we still currently carry, Root Riot, and they're a great product. I've also got the Floriflex incubators, which some of you might recognize. Also a great product. And we've got some Floriflex foam, also a good product. And Oasis is another brand of foam. Essentially, these are, are, are foam, they just rip off, they're super lightweight, they hold the right amount of, of moisture and air to root and they have a hole in them, right? The difference is, is I don't really want this in my living soil, these foam blocks. And some people use rock wool and that is a basalt byproduct. So I think that's probably fine. I've just never used rock wool, I don't really like it. And so something to me um, that just breaks down like my soil is a really good idea. And so these are 100% cocoa core and they have a paper on the side. So it's very natural, it'll break down in your no-till beds and it won't persist. The reason I mention that is the originals when you look at the ingredients, it just says peat moss. So let me see if I can find it on here. Ingredients, sphagnum, peat moss. So you're thinking, perfect, it's a single ingredient product, which we're, we're fond of, and it'll break down. It's just peat moss. Our soil has peat moss in it, who cares? Well, you can do a whole outdoor cycle, and then you can dump the soil out, or you can come back later, and you'll find these perfectly intact little root pucks. In the life of the soil, you're like, how's that possible if it's just peat moss? Years later, a couple years later, you'll find them in the pile still if you dumped your soil somewhere or if you had thrown away some clone cups that didn't keep and you know, whatever. You'll notice they don't break down. And so the conversation behind the scenes was that they use some sort of formaldehyde or there's some sort of chemical antimicrobial that's basically permanent. And so that's why they stay around. Although they're a nice texture, we wanted to move away from it. We brought them back because they're gonna help you root your clones and that's important that they work. The reason why we went away from them is we found the incubator plugs from Floriflex, and they're a great company. The incubator plugs are cocoa core, peat moss, and biochar, and we thought, even better. Now they're gonna break down, they're everything we want. And it's a nice product, I'll show you what they look like. Um, we noticed some of them started coming in with white growth on them. Now, it's a nice puck, and what I did find is these do break down, so I was very happy. Now here's the thing, it's basically a copy of what we're used to, the little, the little brownies, right? They're, they're nice little pucks. We don't have to have it like that. It's just easy because it's not messy. Um, when you're doing a whole bunch, there's no particulate, it's stuck together. But the thing is, is they did it right, they did it naturally. And so although these, would, although these do break down in soil, apparently Floriflex had issues with manufacturing where they would be breaking down in the bag. We started getting bags that weren't sealed and they said that's because they wanted it to be able to release pressure because they would biodegrade. 
we started getting bags with white growth on it and they said it's fine and we had luck rooting in them. But I, I do think maybe there was a lower percentage, maybe they had a problem because they discontinued these. So then we looked at the foam and I didn't like the results. So we kept the root riots around. What I'm hoping to do is move completely back to a product that we really like. That's where the charcoal coin comes in and I'm hoping that you're gonna help me test these out as well. A couple things I noticed right away. There are 78 of these in a pack. What's really nice is 72 cell is kind of standard. So you'll have a few extra in case you drop one or rip one or something. And you can fill up a whole tray with something that's really small and lightweight for shipping. Also, as far as how they expand, I've got an open pack here. You can see that it's got a nice pre-drilled hole for the seed or the clone. And I'm just gonna set it in there. Now, the way that I'm actually gonna do it when I take a whole bunch of cuts right now, instead of trying to put it in the tray and pour water on them, either, either one, I've got a bucket of water and you can just dump a whole bunch of them in the bucket of water at once. And then you'll be able to come and it doesn't make very much mess. Everything stays in the paper there and you can just pull them out of the bucket. So I use them the same way that I use the other pucks that I've used in the past. At least that's my hypothesis so far. I played around with them a little bit before I got to this point so we could discuss this. Other thing I was hoping is that they fit in this Grodan tray and they do. You'll notice that if you take a fresh puck right out of here, a char of the cocoa coin, it doesn't quite fit right in here. But as soon as you expand it, you can see they go in there really nicely and they fit very snug. And then that'll allow me to, to put moisture underneath here to keep the humidity up without having them soaking wet in water. I really like this tray. Plus this is dishwasher safe. And then this extra thick heavy duty tray I'll have forever and they don't leak. So I really like that whole combo. Now you can see I've set it in there and it's already expanded. And so it's a pretty quick process. You could just toss them in a bucket just like your regular rooting pucks. It holds a nice texture. It's not too drippy. It fits right in here. You can put your clones in. At least that's the hope. So that's the goal there. I wanted to show you how they work. Let's go ahead and take some clones. I wanna see how they insert. And then eventually I'll start some seeds in them and see how that works. But the nice thing about charcoal is they do work with a lot of the growers that grow in hydro where they're really dependent upon good cocoa core and it can't be salty or anything. And so on here, it's 100% cocoa core. It's buffered. It's triple washed to remove salts. It's stabilized for proper pH from 6.0 to 6.5. And the cocoa core is 100% biodegradable. It's certified for horticulture. And it talks about the directions. It says, um, put them in a tray, hydrate and expand the cocoa coin by filling the tray with your water nutrient or top feeding with your water. After hydration expansion is complete, you're ready to plant your seed or clone and enjoy. It's exactly what we want to do. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I do like to soak my clones and usually some aloe vera. I also like using RootWise. The microbes can make a difference in how quickly you get rooting and it also protects them. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a small amount in here. It's like an eighth of a teaspoon. I'll just go ahead and use my scissors. You know, I'll just get it mixed up. That's the RootWise. And I'm gonna soak my clones in that. I'm not gonna soak my pucks. I've got a bucket full of them over here and you can see all the ones I tossed in, they're already expanded. That drill holes there, everything is in really intact. And so I'm pretty excited about about using these. Also, not much mess in the bucket. So even though it's raw cocoa core, it's not like a, a wedge and it's just paper, you just get a little particulate and that would happen with any of the brands. So not really a big deal. Let me take a clone and show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna do fruit by the funks. And so we've done a lot of tutorials on this. I'm not trying to do a whole cloning tutorial, but essentially I'm going to remove all of the material that's on the side and just leave the top because I am gonna fill up a whole bunch of them in here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually um, remove. And I've got a bucket, I'll just toss this stuff into the worm bin, feed it to the worms. I'll remove some of the leaf tips, that way they're not overlapping and causing condensation on each other. And then this is a little long because I've got a dome here. I want it to be able to fit in here. That's the whole goal. Otherwise, I'm gonna smash it when I go to put the lid on. And I also want one of these nodes here where there was a leaf, that's where the roots are gonna more easily come out. And I want one of those available to be in the puck. And so if I go there, it's too tall. If I go there, it's probably just, just borderline. So I'm gonna go one shorter and I'm just gonna clean the edges. There's lots of thoughts to this. Look at one of our cloning videos. We can discuss more of that. Today, I'm just gonna show you the basics. I've got a puck that's fully expanded. I'm just gonna see what happens here. Perfect, that was easy. Okay, these are all fruit by the funk and I'll go ahead and label it. All right, let's grab the next one. So now I'm gonna be able to fill up a whole bunch of these and I'm gonna do some testing. And so I'm not gonna demonstrate me taking all these clones. It just takes time and I'd just be standing here on camera. 
Um, but what I want to do is, is show you a couple of cool things. One is I love these trays and now the pucks do fit in there. Let me show you something that a customer actually brought in. In fact, I'm going to do this real quick. I like to pre soak them. So I'm just going to do it. I'll fill these out in a little bit. Um, we had a customer bring in a tray that he bought from us and brought it back to me. And I thought this was really cool. So I'm going to test it out this time. All it has is some wick for self watering. So these will dangle inside my tray. It'll wick water. He's already boiled this to make sure that the wicking will stay and, and will work really well. And so he's tied it on here with a knot. This will dangle in the water. It'll wick water up to it. And then that string runs through each one and that'll carry water up to the coconut core. And I'm not going to use it right away because I don't want to affect the test. I want to see how long they hold moisture. But if I see them drying down in this tray, I'm going to bottom water and I'm going to use this one and I'm going to see how it works. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to swap that out right now. I just wanted to make sure that I discussed it, said thank you. You know who you are. Thank you so much for bringing that down here. It was fun to see you in the store. Okay, I'll set that down. Now the next thing is I've got a standard uh, 72 cell tray. And so this is kind of like for the greenhouse for starting a whole bunch of veggie seeds or for clones, right? And so normally I don't use these because I don't want them to hold too much moisture, but I thought, you know, these fit perfectly in there. They're basically made for it. And so if I use these, I want to see the difference between here where it's more open air versus here where it's basically completely blocking it as far as the plastic surrounding it. And I want to see the difference in, do these root faster? Do they stay the right moisture? Is it better to use them here? And I'll report my findings with you on a follow-up video um, in the next few weeks as, as these should take only, you know, less than two weeks to start rooting. And I might wait up to three weeks just to see the final percentages so I can share a follow-up video with you and show you what they look like. But that's what I want to discuss. The standard 72 cell, they come with 76 coins in one pack. It's easy to ship. That way you can fill up an entire tray with cuts. You can toss them in a bucket. They work just like the other pucks. The pre-drilled hole seems to work really well. I'm also going to try germinating seeds in here, knowing that it's triple washed to remove the sodium, knowing that it's pH buffered. It's unlikely to cause a problem. Also, I think they're a lot nicer than the Jiffy variety. You can also use Jiffy. I've seen people cloning them. I feel like the moisture holding is slightly different. I do think this is going to be better as far as a replacement. There's a reason why the Jiffy pucks did not take over as far as cloning standard operating procedure. But for living soil enthusiasts, I think we're going to borrow from the hydro industry something that is biodegradable for our living soil, something that does hold up to the standard process that we use. And if it roots just as well, because of the structure of that cocoa core, I'm going to be really happy. I will report my findings back to you. Hello and welcome. Today we've got a follow up on the product highlight of the cocoa coin by Char Core. And I'm doing this today because I really wanted to follow up and share my experience. We've now used them across many different methods. I've started seeds in here. We've rooted cuttings across a couple different types of trays and we've had phenomenal results across the board using this product. So I just wanted to explain that to you. And then of course, I've got to transplant these. These are the cuts that we rooted in the last video, 100% success across the board. And the health of them is all impeccable. Just the color you can see inside the tray, probably hard to see. I'll show you the plants as we take them out. I just don't want to take the dome off prematurely. I have some of these quarter gallon bags with Build-A-Soil Light, and this is from AC Infinity. And the build a soil light, I just opened a new bag off the pallet over here and I dumped it into my tub. And I'm going to go ahead and pot these up. And while I do so, I at least wanted to explain how happy I am with using these plugs. So you saw in the last video, I just threw them in the bucket and that expanded them. It happened really quick. It was easy to plug them up. And you can see just quickly by looking here. Oh yeah, it's going to rip the roots. Anyways, they're all fully rooted. And one of the cool things about them is the health is really good, uh, but they held the ideal level of moisture. I didn't have to like re-add water to them or anything special. So to me, that meant success. So let's get these transplanted. Roots on all of them, just dangling. Super good color. Now I'm gonna go quickly because I don't want them to just be sitting out of the humidity as they've been a little bit spoiled in that humidity dome and I've not really hardened them off at all yet. I've barely cracked the dome. Okay. Nice, good ladders on all of them. It's been a couple of weeks. They all started to root in uh, around the 10 day mark. You saw in that video, I just basically soaked them and plugged them. And now things are going pretty well. I do want to add some moisture. I've got to add some more soil, but before I do that, I just want to check dome height. 
Looks like that'll be just about safe in there. So that's good. I'm gonna leave that there for now. And then I'm just gonna top these off with a little bit more soil and then these will be ready to root. We've got plenty and I don't need any of them right now. I've got the mom plant, so we're just gonna give these away. We also tried the method using this tray and we used the wicking rope. So you can see this rope dangled into the water that was down below and it actually kept them a little bit too moist. And so I had to, I had to take the water and just dump it out and now they're all rooted. But in the beginning, the one that was more moist actually took slightly longer to root. And so I just wanted to highlight that. All of these have roots. They're looking really good, but I don't want them to start acting funny without the dome. So I'm gonna dome it. And I'm gonna leave the, the video at that. What I'm gonna do with these, just to give away, is use smaller cups than the quarter gallon. And then that way I have you know some for some of the employees or anybody that wants to take one home. Uh, some of these hard plastic cups for somebody that can you know just put it in a cup holder and drive home with. But every one of them rooted. I liked using the cocoa coin. At home when I started seeds, I'll say the only thing I noticed is that if, if I didn't pre-squeeze it when I'm starting seeds, I could drop the seed a little bit too far down the hole. They're pre-drilled really nicely for cuttings. And if I were to do seeds again, although I got 100% germination, I think that I would just squeeze it a little bit to make sure that my seed stays a little bit more near the top. But I've had great success. I'm looking forward to trying these with the auto flowers. There's no transplant shock. The roots grow right through the bag. The seedling roots grew right through the side of the bag. Anyways, I'm happy to report that it's natural coca core. It will break down unlike the other pucks, like the root riots that we carry. And so I think these are gonna be my new go-to when it comes to popping seeds in something sterile or when it comes to rooting cuts. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about these, I'd be happy to share with you what I've learned so far. Put those questions in this video. Otherwise, until next time, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been a Build a Soil product highlight. Check out the Coco Coin and other products like this at buildasoil.com. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, tell your friends. And until next time, I'll see you on the next Build a Soil episode.